want to tell you about some things we got coming up in the Knoxville area here. We got Mark Pankrat's big basketball camp with tons of VFL legends at his elite camp. That's coming up June 22nd through the 24th. You can sign up your child by going to TN Preps. T, I'm sorry, tnprephoops.com, tnprephoops.com. A lot of VFL is going to be taking part in that. That will be great. Also, this benefits the, the uh, Alzheimer's of Tennessee, and this is the Memory Links Golf Classic. You can uh, sign up the phone number there. Uh, you can go to the website to learn more. Alzheimer Tennessee, a good cause. Um, Check out their Memory Links Golf Classic. Comes up June 29th. Get yourself signed up to play in that one. And then another golf tournament, uh, which involves Sterl the Pearl, our own Sterling Hinton. It's the Odello Golf Classic, benefiting three local charities. Good causes there. You can learn more. Uh, you see the phone number. You see the email address. You see the website. To check out more for any of those three things. This is my, my public service announcements for the day. <laughs> Hope everybody enjoyed that. All right. That's me just being trying to be a nice guy for once. All right. Uh, Chuck and Josh, very quickly. Athlon's preseason guide came out this week. They have Tennessee ranked second in the SEC East, 22nd in the nation, and representing the SEC in the Citrus Bowl. Too high, too low, just about right. Jump on that one, John. I, I think it's fair uh, where Tennessee is now. You see it, you see Tennessee second in the East, and you wonder, is that another unfair uh, disacknowledgement, is that the right word, of <laughs> not acknowledgement of Missouri? Because right. Missouri is going to go into another summer where it's not getting enough attention. That would be eighth in the West, though. You have all seven West schools ahead of Tennessee, according to Athlon. Uh, if they are in that 20 to 25 range, they're probably eight and four, maybe nine and three. Yeah, they could get to a, a nice bowl game. Chuck, you like it or no? I think it's too high. I mean, I'm not going to pick Tennessee second in the East until you beat Florida. I mean, you got to beat Florida. I mean, are you forgetting about Missouri, as Josh pointed yeah. out? So, no, I mean, I would pick Tennessee third or fourth in the East. And, and I, that's borderline top 25, so I'm okay with that. Here's the thing that's interesting. They also, in their top 25 list, they have Alabama, Georgia, and Arkansas all ranked ahead of Tennessee. Well, if those teams finish, if those teams beat Tennessee, it's hard to finish second in the East with a 5-3 and three record. I mean, right. yay, uh, but. but you know, that's still a question. All right. Vince and John, the Lady Vols softball team, was bounced from the College World Series yesterday. Congratulations to them, though, because they did it with a young team that was no, the expectations were nowhere near the College World Series. So, going into next year, 2015 16, is the softball program the best program at UT going into next year? Yeah, I, I think so. It's clearly the most consistent. They have six of the top 60 players in the signing class coming in next year. So they're going to have a lot of talent. That was really the year where it was supposed to come together. After losing the players they did last year, you get that kind of talent this year, next year. So uh, they're the most entertaining and the most consistently successful team on campus at UT. They're, they're really a joy to watch. Yeah, I, I do think that they're primed for another run back to Oklahoma City next year. Again, with the great talent that they have coming in. They do have to shore up the pitching to take that next step. Um, but I think in terms of competing for an SEC championship, you look at the additions to Holly Warlick's Lady Balls basketball team, I think you'd have to put them in the conversation. And in terms of a national championship run, I would also include Judy Pavone's golf team because they made it to match play in the final eight this year. And so I think they'll be primed to compete again next year. Very good. Congratulations to Ralph and Karen Weekly, just a tremendous hire those hires were <laughs> when they were made. They've done a tremendous job. Last one here, uh, in January, defensive back DeAndre Payne, who made four tackles last year for Tennessee, uh, decided to transfer to Maryland. And everybody was up in arms. Remember that he and Vic Wharton and a number of other guys were transferring. Uh, there were some people in town who were uh, taking to the media to say that this only shows that Butch Jones is mean to the players, et cetera, et cetera. Much, most of us here said, no, nah, I think it says more about the players. Vic Wharton, for example, has been to, I think, six schools in seven years or six schools in six years. Some of these guys just transfer, which brings me back to DeAndre Payne. He stayed at Maryland for four months. Now he's transferring to a junior <laughs> college. So does that, once again, you, you guys may disagree. Maybe you think that staff is mean and running off people. I think you're seeing young guys who aren't playing much who have other young guys in front of them, and that's why they're leaving. And I think DeAndre Payne, probably a good example of that. I'm getting out of here. You stay at your next place four months and get out of there. Am I wrong that this is probably more about the players than it is Jones and his staff? Well, I think there's a mix there. I think it, it is partly on the players, but in every situation is different. And there's some that are head scratching too. 
like a Dwayne Hendricks. Oh, he, you might want to go back closer to home. Yeah, home from side. Illinois, it was to pit. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, each situation is different. But the coaches are ultimately responsible for who they bring into their program. So maybe, I know you're bringing in a lot of guys, but maybe you need to make sure you bring in the right guys so that the transfers aren't at the, the volume that they have. And when Butch Jones signed so many players the last two years, it, it was just going to happen. You were going to have guys leave. And sometimes right. you have uh, a relationship that just doesn't work. Daniel Helm left. I don't think that's an indictment on anybody. It wasn't a right fit for him. He went to Duke. Uh, he was a talented player, just going to go play somewhere else. Judd, very quickly. I think you've just, a lot of it, John, I think you've just had much more intense practices, too. And I think a lot of these guys just can't, don't handle that as well. And like we're saying, they're not being able to get the playing time. And look what Butch Jones inherited that Derek Dooley left, teams that would not compete. Very quickly, John, what your take? I just think that, as Josh pointed to, you look at just the great amount of people that have arrived at the, with this program in just the last couple of years. I think the writing was on the wall for it. If it continues, I mean, it's fair to question. It's yeah. fair to question, but I, I just think that this was kind of going to happen. Daniel Hood, who does radio with you quite a bit, um, we were chatting last uh, in January when some of these kids are transferring, and he said, well, get back to me when Kurt Majid or a Josh Dobbs transfers. Uh, and, and he was the first to point out, and this, he's of that generation. He said. A lot of guys in this day and age have been told you're the best thing on earth, and they don't want to hear that you have to work. They don't want to hear that somebody else is in front of you. And I thought that was an interesting take from someone who was under Lane Kiffin, Derek Dooley, Butch Jones, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, all right. When we come back, LSU has said they want no part in playing Texas A&M on Thanksgiving night, something that Texas A&M was kind of counting on. Here's my question. Should Tennessee try and fill that void and find somebody in the SEC to partner with to get themselves an extra TV game every year? Come on back on the Sports Horse. <laughs>